Mr. DeVries masterminded this plan to crack the case of Natalie Holloway's disappearance. Mr. DeVries, thank you for being with us. Mr. DeVries, how did you get the idea to do this to start with? Well, because the case was still unsolved. And uh, that, that amazes me because uh, Joran lied a couple of times, established lies. And uh, the whole case happened on, let's say, uh, 500 square meters on the beach. So I thought it must be possible to solve this case. Now, it, it, you are kind of the Dutch version of uh, crime fighting, correct? Yeah, that's right. And so you have instinctively, for all these years you've been having your show, an interest in the outcome of unsolved homicides, missing people cases. That's right. I'm a crime reporter for uh, 30 years now, and I've been investigating um, almost 500 murder cases and, and disappearances. And well, I then we have some. a lot in common, <laughs> sir. Yeah. Let me ask you something. You have very carefully reviewed this tape over and over and over. This was your idea. Mm -hmm. You had it executed uh, at great expense, some say danger to you, as a matter of fact. Do you really believe, do you really believe a perfectly healthy young girl, Natalie Holloway, with no history of drug use, no history that she had used drugs that night, no history of epilepsy, would go out on a beach and suddenly go into convulsions and die. Yeah, I agree with you that's very hard to believe. Uh, I, um, young people just don't die from drinking too much so it's hard to believe but I don't have any evidence on anything else so this What about is it story. Dave Holloway? What do you make of it? And, and later on in his confession, the secretly taped video, he says I hope they never find her body because if they do I'll be in deep uh, expletive. So if finding her body would land him in jail, why if he hadn't done anything wrong? Well, you and I have discussed that before. You know, when you go into a, a, a panic, which he said he did, uh, the first thing you think of is calling an ambulance. And uh, with him choosing the alternative of getting rid of her, uh, something else happened. Let's go to investigation. I believe, I, I believe it was uh, possible date rape, uh, drug used, and and a possible rape and murder. Back to Peter DeVries, Dutch investigative journalist, joining us live, and we'll, we're about to start taking your calls. Mr. DeVries, was there a difference? Did he ever say Natalie foamed at the mouth? Natalie what? H had foam coming from her no, mouth. No, no, no. He, he denied that. He uh, denied Pat that. Yeah, Patrick asked him that. Did, uh, was there any foam out of, of the mouth? And he denied it. No, I, he said, I didn't see it. Peter, where do the Calpo brothers fit into this whole thing? Well, they brought him to the beach. Yes. They dropped him there, and Natalie, of course, and then they went home. And uh, Joran was asked by Patrick, uh, by Patrick, the insider, what do they know? And then uh, Joran said, and you, you, you have to notice his body language at this moment, at that moment. No, they, they, they don't nothing. They, they I, I, I told them nothing. So they just got dragged into this unwittingly? Yeah. Out to the lines, Janet in Maryland. Hi, Janet. Hello, Nancy. I'd like to ask you, watching some of the tapes of your to Patrick, I noticed that to, to me, his face, his demeanor changed when it was talking about disposing of the body to that person that he got to get the boat. It seemed like all of a sudden he didn't trust Patrick, and I wonder if he deliberately gave them a, a red herring to throw them off. You know, that is, that is so interesting that you use the phrase red herring, because when I first heard the mention of Dory, I said, that's a red herring. Uh, to Bethany Marshall, psychoanalyst and author, Bethany, she is right. He paused, he wouldn't tell, he wouldn't give it up. Then he, he later on gave it the name Dory. He did have different body language. Explain, Bethany. Janet is right. I mean, Joran Vandersloot can't tell the truth even when he's making a confession. And I think he thought that this insider, Patrick, was like a, the Don Corleone, the mafia king, a good fella. He wanted to impress him in some respects, but he still was afraid of getting into trouble in others. And, you know, we talk so much on this show about sociopaths, how they have no conscience, no remorse, no anxiety about, about getting into trouble. This is our clinical vignette. This is what it looks like. This is what those word mean, words mean. This is a sociopath. 
to Peter DeVries. Everyone, Peter DeVries is a Dutch investigative journalist who has devoted much of his life to reporting on crime, murders, uh, who masterminded the discovery, the creation of this taped confession secretly recorded of Jorn Vandersloot. Also with us tonight, Natalie's father, Dave Holloway. Uh, question to you, Peter, where does the father, Vandersloot's father, fit into this? Somebody had to help him. Peter? Yeah, some, somebody had to help him, and we don't know who it is. He claimed that it was Dory, and I agree that um, uh, I think he's protecting somebody else by mentioning that name. But we don't know who it is. What we do know is that Joran, <coughs> Joran told that his father smuggled a cell phone into the prison when he so was arrested. So we know the father will break the rules. As if Joran is telling you the truth. If you believe Joran yes, he is, yes. When I saw what I saw, you know, a person who had no emotions, no respect for human life at all. He deprived uh, Natalie of a proper funeral. Uh, you know, he deprived us of uh, her livelihood and grandchildren and whatever. And he also deprived uh, a lot of the citizens of Aruba and Holland of, of many things. Uh, he was self-centered and, and, and only looking out after himself. You're hearing the voice of Dave Holloway, Natalie's father, who is with us tonight. Right now you're seeing video, stunning video, from the TV show Pe Paw and Whit Whitteman. That's on Dutch broadcaster NPS. You see Jorn Vandersloot throwing wine into the face of Peter DeVries. DeVries masterminded the tape that catches Jorn Vandersloot confessing to being with Natalie Holloway at the time of her death, then disposing of her body in the ocean. Peter, what do you recall about that moment on that show when Jorn Vandersloot, true to form, misbehaves? Yeah, well, it was at the end of the show, and uh, I wasn't look, paying any attention to him, and then he, st he stood up, grabbed the glass of wine, and threw it in my face because he was so frustrated about my asking all the time. and. I, I, he, he tried to gain sympathy by the audience because the case was closed, he was released, he thought he was off the hook, he considered himself as a winner. But during the show I, 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 I asked him, why uh, were you lying all the time? Why didn't you answer simple questions? And uh, he was very frustrated about that, and that's the reason he throw, threw me the glass of wine into my face. To Dave Holloway, this is Natalie's father. If he would treat a grown man that way, what would he do to Natalie Holloway alone, late at night, out on a beach, ice, in an isolated area? Well, you just saw it. Uh, you just saw the, uh, just the tip of the iceberg of his <coughs> behavior. Beth saw it in the beginning. And uh, we saw all of America, uh, well, in fact, all the world saw what type of person this individual is.